friends, brothers, pals, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. I know what kind of video this is gonna be. This is basically a rescue mission. Yesterday afternoon, my buddy Jeff and I were fishing on my boat in a small lake up in the high country. And with one thing and another, it capsized. Things got a little bit serious for a while there. Um, I'll talk to you a bit later in the video about just what happened and precautions that we had that basically saved our lives. But today's video is gonna be us trying to get the boat out of the lake and back home. First off, a massive shout out to the boys that have come together on basically no notice to help me out here. Jared has come down from Auckland. He's gonna grab his boat. He's gonna come and get us over there. Dustin, JP, his buddy, Gian. They've just dropped everything to come and help me do this. I've just dropped into Trev Terry Marine over there, picked up a couple of things, an electric bilge, a new bung. We've got some buckets and a lot of manpower. We're gonna try and get it done. Dustin right here, he's got some waders and stuff. Good morning. Thank, Thank you, brother. Buddy. And that's where my boat should be. It's right there. So we're gonna get this. Uh, gonna get this moving. Just chuck it on top of that. Yeah, just chuck it. Oh, hang on a second. All right, there. I'll catch up with you guys soon. We're gonna get this going. Morning. <laughs> Thank you for helping me out, man. Oh man, that's okay. Uh, just throw it anywhere. It doesn't matter where. So we can lift it, bung in, bucket, bilge pump, hook it up, tow it back. It should be us. Right? Should be. That's a plan, eh? You got it? Good, good, good. Clear, brother? Yeah. Okay guys, so here we are. This is this is the scene. It actually, it looks like overnight the lake levels dropped considerably, which is gonna help us out a ton. This was pretty much all underwater to about here last night when we left it. So things are looking good so far. But uh, yeah, we probably ended up about 60, 70 feet out there, which is where we went in. And then we were in the water for about half an hour. We we're trying to get the boat back to here. But then we had to go all the way around the lake to try and get back to the boat ramp, which was a mission. But I'll tell you all about that another time. And I stashed everything in here, which is still here, thankfully. Which we'll bring with us. But yeah. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so if you take that bung now, Everyone's good? Yep. Yeah, might as well wash. Oh. You guys did so well to get this boat up. Yeah, man. I don't yeah, know how, yeah. how the crap you did that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's going to float now anyway, like that. Right at the bungs in. There's, I wouldn't say there's any holes in there. So the water sort of came in here? Yeah, so we were on this side. So like Jeff was Jeff was here, yeah. out over the side with the fish. Yeah. Oh. I was like oh. here, and I was way out over here, like with the camera, trying to get a cool angle, and then that just dipped, and then a whole lake just poured in. Oh, it's to, it stayed a bit dry in there. Yeah, it wasn't too bad, yeah, considering. There's some of my fly line that Jeff had to cut off himself. Shit. It was all wrapped around his legs. So he had to get he had to kind of get it and then cut it on the prop yeah. of the Minkota to free himself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare. It was chaos. That'll be sweet. That'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, brother. That's that's Jeff's bag. 
You got it? Hold that. You got it? Someone hold that. Oh, you got one back. You go, go and do it. Anger. Luckily, it's a beautiful day today, so it's a perfect day just to kind of get everything open and at least starting to dry out. Uh, that's just a start. So yeah, uh, that's that's where we're at right now. It's quarter to two, so I've got to I've got to go into town. I've got to source a new phone. I've got to go to the supermarket. I've got to get guiding stuff uh, for tomorrow, um, and. Maybe some other stuff too. I don't really know. I'm a bit wrecked, to be honest. Didn't really sleep last night, so. Yeah, running on fumes for sure. Um, right, I'll catch up with you guys a bit later. I've got to get all this stuff done first. That's my priority, and then uh, I'll catch up with you guys. So it's 10 to five, and I've spent all day just basically trying to get stuff together. Obviously we got Loopy out this morning, um, now I've got it back. I've been trying to you know, dry her out, dry everything out, pull everything out of the truck. I didn't touch it last night because it was just hammering down the rain when I got back and it was dark and I was just knackered and... I mean, I was in shock to be fair, we both were. It was, um, it was a real serious situation and it happened so, so quickly. I mean, I'm not going to go into it into too much detail because it's just going to be me waffling and I'll be waffling for sure because I didn't really sleep last night and I'm just... I'm knackered. I'm just mentally and physically done. Yeah, so it went from one minute we were photographing a beautiful fish and then within literally about four seconds, everything turned on its head, <laughs> literally. Uh, and, you know, the entire lake was in the back of the boat. We were thrown out, boat was upside down. And, you know, it was, it, it was super scary. I guess a little bit at the time, but more so after we had actually got ourselves Back and we were driving home um, I guess like yeah the gravity of what almost happened and did happen kind of hits you and we were yeah like I say we were definitely in shock hypothermia was a thing there so we had to deal with that we had to deal with just you know running out of daylight getting back no one else around do we hit the EPIRB button uh, all that kind of stuff uh, these things here a hundred percent saved us I mean we were fishing on a boat in waders because of the weather and I can guarantee if we didn't have these at least one of us would be dead and that's not being dramatic I'm not trying to I'm not trying to ham this up or be dramatic or anything but it's actually the seriousness of what happened uh, if we hadn't have had life jackets at least one of us wouldn't be here now Jeff had caught a really good fish and he was at the back right hand side of the boat leaning over with the fish over the net and the water and I was about midway up probably just past the steering wheel on the same side and I was leaning out trying to take a picture of the fish so you know all that weight was on that side she sits really low she sits really low in the water anyway we were in the moment we didn't notice what was going on but that back end just just dipped enough and within about four seconds the entire lake was in the back of the boat and we were over and out and things got real serious real quick uh, and it really was that quick I guess some of you may think that I shouldn't share my mistakes but I feel like this is the sort of thing that could happen to any one of us and just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean to say it won't happen I just thought I'd make this video so like you guys can learn from my mistake because I think that's important what it does highlight is just make sure you have stuff in place have your life jackets have your EPIRB, have things in place so that if something does go wrong, you're gonna get through it and you're gonna live. Some things went wrong, a lot of things went right, 
And then basically, once we'd secured the boat and we'd taken care of the hypothermia and the shock setting in, we then had to get around to the boat ramp on foot, which involved uh, <laughs> involved a lot of walking in just swampy, boggy stuff. We had to then do another swim. We had to take the dry clothes we had off, put them in my fish pond rucksack, put the life jackets back on, reinflate them manually, and then swim again, then get out, empty out the waders, and then just repeat the process uh, to get back. And we were just on dark when we pretty much got back to the, uh, to the truck. Another thing I want to do a shout out to the fish pond. That backpack was super helpful in just keeping me afloat while we were trying to like, you know, float with the boat back to the shore and also just to do the swims and keep our gear dry while we were trying to get back to the truck. It didn't fault all once. It's a big shout out to you guys. That stuff is legit good stuff. Also a shout out to Trev Terry, Marine Talpo. You guys were super helpful uh, this morning when I went in there just for some bits and pieces and some advice. Um, super friendly, super helpful and yeah, really appreciate that too. So that's about it. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you up to date with what's going on with old Loopy and, and the process. I've got it booked in in a couple of days. Just get it looked over, see what's going on, see what needs to be repaired, replaced. I don't know. I'll keep you posted. Hopefully we can get it back on the water before the end of the season. And it doesn't cost me too much. But the important thing is I'm okay. Jeff's okay. Everything else is just stuff at the end of the day. Even if you don't learn something from this video, maybe it just gives you a little bit of a nudge to just make sure you are doing things right and being safe on the water. Life jackets are the one, man. I've been guilty of it myself in the past, just especially when it's nice weather and just thinking you're gonna be okay. I don't need it, I'm a good swimmer. Yeah, nah, make sure you got life jackets and they're no good under the seat or in the, in the cargo hold. Uh, put them on, it's a scary thing when all of a sudden you're under the water and things have gone tits up. Another massive shout out to the boys that came and helped me out. They all just dropped everything to come and help me today and I feel super lucky to have friends like that who, you know, help me out in a situation. I'll keep you posted on everything. Be safe out there guys. Have a great week and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.